Yesterday, the 13th of May, exactly 100 years ago, Our Lady appeared to three children outside the village of Fatima in Portugal. To Lucia, age nine, and her cousins Francisco, age eight, and Jacinta, aged six, who were out on a hillside caring for the sheep of their parents. It wasn't the first supernatural experience they'd had. In previous months, the angel of peace had come to them and taught them to pray and to offer their sufferings to God as an act of reparation for sin. But then on this day, the 13th day of May, Our Lady's Month, 1917, a woman came all in white, more brilliant than the sun, as Lucia said. And when she was asked where she came from, this lady said, I come from heaven. This woman asked them to pray, to devote themselves to the Holy Trinity, and to say the rosary every day to bring peace to the world and an end to the war, the terrible scourge of the First World War at that time. When others, neighbours and family got to hear about this, you can imagine there was scepticism teasing and outright persecution but these young children stood firm in their story and in their convictions and their faithfulness. The lady appeared six times to them in total. She revealed that the children would suffer especially from the unbelief of their families and friends. She revealed, she prophesied that the two younger children Francisco and Jacinta would be taken to heaven very soon but that Lucia would live longer in order to spread her message and devotion to the Immaculate Heart. And it happened that two years later, the younger cousins had died from the Spanish flu, but Lucia lived to the age of 97, writing her memoirs and meeting many popes. On the last apparition, the 13th of October, the woman revealed her name as the Lady of the Rosary. And on that day, the miracle of the sun took place when 70,000 people witnessed an apparition, the sun turning in the sky in a way that was completely beyond natural explanations and that was affirmed by atheists and skeptics as much as believers. Lucia said that on Our Lady's third appearance in July, three secrets were revealed to them. First, she let the children see a brief vision of hell, and I quote Lysia, we saw something like an ocean of fire, immersed in the fire were the demons and the souls of the damned that were like transparent embers, black or bronze, that had human forms. In the second secret, Our Lady told them that this terrible war would end soon, but she prophesied accurately that another world war would break out if people did not stop offending God and if, as she said, Russia were not converted. These two secrets were made public in 1941, but the third secret speaks about the persecution of the church and the assassination of a bishop dressed in white. And this was revealed by Rome only in the year 2000 at the behest of Pope John Paul II. And Pope John Paul, Saint John Paul, identified with that bishop being killed in this vision of Our Lady and attributed his survival of that famous assassination attempt on his life, which took place on what date? the 13th of May 1981 and he attributed his escape, his survival to the intervention of Our Lady of Fatima. To quote Pope John Paul II, it was a mother's hand that guided the bullet's path and in his throes the Pope halted at the threshold of death. Pope Francis was in Fatima this weekend Yesterday was the canonization of Francisco and Jacinta, who died so young. They are, little factoid to note, the youngest saints ever canonized who
who were not martyrs. And it's the first time in the history of the church that children who did not die as martyrs have been declared saints. So, in just a few minutes there, the story of Fatima. Now, a hundred years is a long time, and some of you might be thinking, well, this is very old-fashioned, it's out of date, this is before my grandparents were alive. Maybe it sounds like a bit of local history, local colour, if you go on a tour around Portugal. Or maybe it only interests students at King's doing war studies with their geopolitical interest in the 20th century. Well, look, this couldn't be further from the truth. And really, my main point today is the continuing relevance of the message of Fatima and by happy chance the connection with our own scriptures today, which is just what I want to draw out now. What are the core messages here? Because there's so many, well there's pages and pages of memoirs, so many different visions and prayers and messages, but just three to highlight. The first message of Fatima is the real possibility of hell and the hope of heaven. The terrifying visions of hell experienced by the three children, it marked them deeply. They came to know the reality of sin and the separation of God that sin brings about. It's important for us to get the theology right here. It's not that God wishes anyone to be damned, but that we can freely choose to separate ourselves from his love and, him, and from him in this life and freely choose to separate ourselves from him for eternity. It's not that God refuses his mercy to anyone. His mercy is infinite and unconditional. But it's that we can freely refuse the offer of his mercy and turn our back on the gracious gift of his forgiveness. But the effect of this knowledge on the children was to lead them to prayer, not to fear to pray for their own conversion and to pray for sinners because the hope of heaven was stronger for them than the fear of hell. And this is in fact the second reading today from St Peter. The desire to set ourselves close to Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, our salvation. And the knowledge that in St Peter's words today, God has called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. We need to rejoice in the light. It's Easter tide. This is the Easter candle burning here. But let's not be naive about the darkness. The darkness from which we believe we have been saved and which there is a danger we could fall back into. The message of Fatima is not about fear but hope. And remember the Fatima prayer that we pray often as part of the rosary. It goes, O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Yes, the reality of hell, but more importantly, Jesus, heaven, mercy. The second message the importance of prayer, penance and reparation. The need and the huge responsibility for Christians to pray more. To pray especially for peace and for an end to conflict and violence and for the conversion of sinners. Is this any less relevant today than a hundred years ago? And again, do you see the link with the scriptures today? In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the very reason that the Apostles appoint seven deacons to serve in the Jerusalem church is because they, the Apostles, are worried that their own commitment to prayer is going to diminish. They can see their apostolic life getting caught up in administration and the demands of the church and the world forgetting about the centrality the absolute centrality 
for all Christians of prayer. It's true for them, it's true for the children of Fatima, and it's true for us. And just to hear the practical advice that Mary gives. Make reparation, do penance. What does this mean? Well, in its simplest form, to accept humbly and patiently, and to offer up to God the, unavoid the unavoidable sufferings and difficulties and frustrations of our life. To offer all this to God as a prayer and offering for our own sins and for the sins of the world. It's not that we become passive about suffering, but the unavoidable sufferings of life we humbly give back to God and we believe that to do this in union with the offering of Jesus Christ is powerful and effective. We share in his work of salvation by honouring him and by uniting our sufferings and our offering with his. This is the meaning of reparation. And the practical prayers that Mary gives us she says to us, this is her, not me. Pray the rosary every day. There it is. Advice from the Queen of Heaven. And I would say, repeating her, if it's possible, please do. But if you're not able, then I would reshape, adapt Mary's request, very humbly, and say, pray the rosary in some form each day in some form. If you can pray the rosary, the five decades, the five decades of a mystery, please do. If that's not possible for you, for whatever reason, to pray one decade of the rosary each day, it takes three minutes. And what a beautiful way of praying the rosary daily. And look, don't worry, don't be afraid, be honest, but if you're not praying at all, then simply after today to pray the Hail Mary each morning. What a wonderful start to praying the rosary. What a powerful prayer. What a blessing and a transformation on your life it would bring to discover the spiritual value of the rosary in your life and how it would help you and change you. And the third core message. Devotion to Mary and consecration to her Immaculate Heart. This is a good message for us in May, Mary's month. And to understand the theology of this devotion here. Never forget, we're saved by the love of Jesus Christ alone, by his Sacred Heart. It says in St John's Gospel today, I am, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way and we come to the Father through him. But what was his way to us? How did he, the eternal Son of God, come to be with us in our humanity? Through the way of Mary. Through her yes at the Annunciation. Through her womb through her openness to the Lord, through her immaculate heart, we received the saving sacred heart of Jesus Christ. Through her yes, Jesus in his humanity was able to give his yes to us. Through her love and prayer, she was able to lead many people to her son. We see this iconically in the wedding feast at Cana when she pointed the servants to the Lord at the cross when she stands before the Lord at Pentecost when she's praying with and for the church and helping the whole church to know her son Jesus she is not a secondary saviour she is not the mediator Jesus is the one mediator between God and man but it is through Mary that we received Jesus into our world and into our history. And it's through Mary today that we can come to know Jesus more and more deeply. This is the prayer of St. Louis de Montfort, the Totus Tuus prayer. And listen to how carefully it's phrased. Listen to this. I am all yours 
and all I have is yours, O dear Jesus, through Mary, your Holy Mother. The prayer is to Jesus, I am all yours, you are my Saviour, Jesus, and I come to know you through the love and the prayer of Mary, your mother. To Jesus through Mary. That's St. Louis de Montfort's devotion. And it's the same devotion, really, of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and our love for Our Lady of Fatima. What an amazing gift she was to the children a hundred years ago. And what an amazing gift she is and this devotion is to us still today.